Welcome to Just Minding My Business Media. We hope you have had the most successful of days and have used your time wisely. Today, we welcome Allison G. Daniels, who is the founder of Allison Daniels Ministries, LLB, and AGD Publishing Company. She is an international diversity trainer, motivational speaker, book writing coach, award-winning three times best-selling author of 31 plus books, and the visionary author of the book, Empowered to Win, as well as a podcast hostess. Allison empowers women to write their stories, share their stories, and publish their stories, one book at a time, as she continues to turn writers into successful authors. Now, she is a contributing author to the anthology, Finally Free. Welcome, Allison. Well, thank you, thank you for having me. Yes, welcome, 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 Allison. And oh my goodness, <laughs> I don't even know where to begin. <laughs> 31 books? Yes. Yes, 31 books, and I'm still writing. I still have some more coming out. <laughs> wow. So let me tell you, when did you know you had that gift? <laughs> uh, you know what? I'm going to say I had to be around 11 or 12 when I really, really started getting into writing and, you know, writing in my journal and honestly saving a lot of my writings. Then I realized, wait a minute, I believe I have something going on here. And um, I constantly wrote every day, whatever was going on for that day, that's exactly what I did. <laughs> wow. That is um, amazing that you at 11 had knew that you had that gift and continued with it. So how do you support other writers? Tell us about that. So one of the um, avenues that I do to support writers are actually is two. The first one is um, God bless me to um, start my publishing company called AGD Publishing. So I actually help authors, you know, um, get their book, you know, out of their head <laughs> into print and get it um, published. And that's one way. Another way, a lot of times writers, they just don't know where to begin so I started a um, writing class entitled uh, 30, days, 30 Days of Writing. And what happened is you'll go, um, you know, the 30 days with me, learning how to write your chapter, learning how to um, complete your outline, and then continue from there to start getting your book um, into print. Wow. That is, that's awesome. That is really awesome. There's so many people wanting to write a book mm -hmm. and they just, it, it's like overwhelming. Yes. They don't know where to start. They don't know. They don't know what they don't know. Right. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and because of that, they just, they don't do it. Mm -hmm. And for our audience, how important is it to put your words on paper you know what i would say it's very important because one of the things you want to do is to be able to leave a legacy behind and um i have two beautiful daughters and i want to make sure that they know their history and that they know you know the experiences that i have gone through and as they get older they can write their story and share their story I believe it's very important for each one of us because we have a story in us. Mm -hmm. So I believe it's very important that we tell our story um, the way we want it told and not allow someone else to tell our story because no one can tell it better than you can. Mm -hmm. So I think it's very important that we um, share our story. You know, it, it'll help heal someone else. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Definitely, for sure. But, um, wow. <laughs> It's so much. I said, what else does, is she doing, Ruth? Can you give me a little bit more of her bio? Wow, because I know you've done the 31 books. Um, but tell me about one of your books. What is your most, out of all of your writing, which one do you prize the most? Um, the one which is the 31st book, and it made the um, bestsellers list, which is called Walk in Your Authority unleashing the divine power from within. 
And I chose that book only because, because I love all of the books because they each have their own meaning and there was a purpose behind me writing them. But I chose Walk in Your Authority because I realized, um, you know, it was 2014 and my mom was going through something. And um, I asked God, I was just getting ready to become a minister. And um, I was just getting ready to be um, licensed. And um, my mom took ill. And I said, God, if you make my mom well, if you do this, you know, um, for me, I, I won't become a minister. I'll sit back and I'll, you know, I'll, I'll just do what I've been doing in church. And when I went to church that day, because um, we never stopped going to church, even though my mom was, you know, ill, we still carry on. But I remember the pastor saying to me, or saying to all of us, but he was really talking to me. <laughs> mm -hmm. He said, don't attach what someone else is going through to what I'm trying to do through you. And mm. so I took that to mean that he's working something out in my mom and she's going to be okay. And he's also working things out through me to trust him more. And so I, I struggled with that title, Walk in Your Authority, because I was a new minister. So the first thing people are going to say is, well, you're a new minister. What do you mean you um, walk in your authority? Well, I had to walk in my authority that day because I had to make sure that my mother was okay. So um, throughout that book, you'll hear me talking about I had to speak with 25 doctors. I had to talk to um, nurses and just so many people because I needed them to explain to me or to our family, what just happened to uh, my mom, who was a healthy person. I mean, you know, she, she's a little older, but still healthy, didn't have no mental anything going on. Wow. And now all of a sudden, there's something going on, you know, explain to me. So I had to walk in my authority, you know, and um, face whatever it is we would have needed to face. But I believe that um, the doctors had to give us as a family, um, me, my siblings, my dad, some answers. And because I was the oldest daughter, the oldest grandchild, everything fell on me. So um, I say that that is my, um, you know, a book that I hold close to my heart because I've even asked my mom if I could share that story um, in the book. And she said, yes, because first of all, I want people to know to watch out for the medicines that they take because it was another medicine that didn't, what I want to say, didn't coincide with the other medicines mm -hmm. that took her a swerve, uh, a world spin, you know? So we have to be careful and we have to, you know, look out for, you know, our parents. And so I had to step up and do that. And when she said it was okay to share, um, um, that was helpful to me because I wanted to be able to tell someone else, listen, you know, monitor what these doctors are giving, you know, to your parents. Monitor um, what they're giving to you. Yeah. You know, I'm a, I get on that Google and I grab a dictionary and, and I'm going through it. You know, this, uh-uh, I don't like that. Mm -mm, that doesn't work. We right. need to do that. So, Yes, yeah. I do the same exact thing for my yes. husband because he'll just take whatever the doctor gives him. I'll <laughs> exactly. be like, hold oh, up. <laughs> no, no. Let me see what the side effects are. Exactly. Let me see if it's going to work with what you're already taking. Yeah. Because a lot of them are supposed to do that. But they so fast paced, they so busy handing yeah. out prescriptions. Exactly. You know, a lot of them have, you know, 50 patients. Yes. or more that they're servicing they don't have time to do all that and we know that yes and they don't have time to read up on all the latest drugs that are coming to them the pharmaceutical companies are bringing to them yes they don't have the time to do all of that reading it's a voluminous amount of reading yes. so we really do have to be our own advocates yes for sure mm -hmm. for sure so tell us what made you do finally free <laughs> I'm laughing because I was interviewing Dawn on my um, podcast, Authors Chat with Allison. And then after we got off the line, she was like, how about you um, becoming a co-author in my book? And I said, Dawn, I love the title. I'm finally free. I said, I, I have to do this. 
And what made me really want to um, be in her book, first of all, Dawn is a beautiful person all by yes. herself. So. Yes, she is. <laughs> you know, she's just a beautiful <laughs> person. But um, I'm 53 years old. And so last year I graduated. Um, I've always wanted to graduate from college, but, you know, as life go on, sometimes we don't always get to do the things that we want to do. And God has blessed me, you know, with a beautiful husband, two beautiful daughters, and now the caregiver of my parents. I never thought that I could go back to college. But when I took back my life <laughs> and I made some decisions on, I'm going to do and accomplish some of the things that Allison has always wanted to accomplish. So I went back to college um, last year and I graduated, but I wanted to do that to show my daughters, you know, it's never too late. Mm -hmm. And then I wanted to, um, you know, take back my health, take back. My, I was always, you know, once I get off work, if I'm not doing something for the church or if I'm not doing something for someone else, I was kind of all over the place, but I needed to stop and take care of me. So once I became finally free and, you know, released some people from me, <laughs> I know that's right. <laughs> you know, and, and thought about me. Um, I realized that um, when Dawn told her story and then I realized that's me, that's me taking back my life. I'm finally free. I just feel like, you know, I'm finally free. When I started the publishing company, finally free. God bless me to work on my job now, um, December the 11th, or it will be 37 years. I'm finally free. So it's like, even though I wanted to do, you know, graduate out of college at 22 and get married at this age, that God still ordered my steps. Yes. So I still don't feel like I missed a beat. I just wasn't on the beat the way the world wanted me to be. But when I realized how finally free I was, I was like, I'm just happy. <laughs> I know that's right. Cause I'm, I'm one of those late bloomers for college. I was like, I think I graduated at 50 something. And uh, I'm telling you, it was the hardest thing I ever did. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> mm. Because I had, I was in and out of college, take a course here, take a course mm -hmm. here, stop. One day, I just prayed about it that night. Yes. Got up at six o'clock in the morning, filled out the application, went to the school, put it in and started school. And, wow. and went all the way through until I got my degree. It was like, yeah. I just put a stake in the ground. I prayed mm -hmm. about it first. I asked God, yes. you know, do I, is this the thing to do or what? You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. and I got up at six o'clock in the morning and just started filling out all the paperwork and doing everything and then going to the school and I was in. Yes. Starting class. It took me forever. Cause it took me <laughs> 10 years to get my degree. Wow. Because I had to go part time. I was working a full time job, mm -hmm. had a kid, a husband, bills. My yes. girlfriend teases me to the day. Why you put the what is it? The horse before the car. <laughs> <laughs> but it just wasn't time. Mm -hmm. I just wasn't serious enough. And that particular day, I guess I had been thinking about it. And then that oh. day. It was like, I got to get this done. And I never look back. Yes. So I, I know how you feel when it's something that you need to do. You mm -hmm. need to do it. And if God yeah. approves it, you already know you need to do it. Exactly. <laughs> Ain't no turning back. <laughs> nope, That's none. True. And so yeah. very often we put off the things that we intrinsically know that we're supposed to do. And we get involved in everything else, just like you're saying, there's so many other mm -hmm. things that distract us. And therefore we don't do what it is that we know in our hearts we're supposed to do. Because we've yeah. been praying about it forever. You'll hear people say, you know, uh, well, I, I thought I wanted to do that. And, you know, I knew I wanted to do it, but you know, but, 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 but. And I'm glad that you made that statement. It's never too late. Really it's done. never too late to do what you need it to do, what you're, heart tells you that you must do you yes. know pray about it and then execute yes yeah get it done that order <laughs> <laughs> yes mm -hmm. 
for sure. Because, I mean, the things that, you know, I think that uh, seniors now are so different oh, than no. seniors of years ago. And I think mm -hmm. it's more because the encouragement that they have to yes. keep moving forward, to keep doing things. And, you know, I just love all of the senior people that I meet that are writing books, that gone mm -hmm. back to college. I was watching TV and it was a young lady, her and her daughter was in college at the same time. Wow. <laughs> you know, oh, and it's, change. yeah, and it should because it, you know, your brain don't die. Right. As you get old, <laughs> you know, your brain, if you keep it active, it will continue to serve you. Yeah. You know, so often, uh, even years ago, I kind of like knew that I would never be in that category that would really retire, you right. know, and looking for some place to sit down for the rest of my life. That was not going to happen. And I knew that years ago. And I guess because I've had that, uh, that attitude, now I, I'm carrying that forward and looking to accomplish some of those things that I've really wanted to accomplish all my life amongst the writing books. So uh, I think this is really good that you made that statement about uh, it's never too late. No. Because no. our listening audience, many will hear that because people are discouraged and often discouraged out of their lives. You know, people will say, oh, you can't do that. Oh, don't do that. Or this is what I want you to do. Mm -hmm. And you end up putting everything that you want on the back burner until finally you wake up one day and you say, wait a minute, stop the madness. <laughs> well, it's 20 years later and I haven't accomplished what I wanted to accomplish. So this is um, an important conversation for those who are listening. Mm -hmm. And I noticed all the work that you've been doing uh, and the types of books that you do in your own publishing company it's not surprising that, you know, finally free would have sort of lit a match for you, you know, that would have struck yes. a chord with you. So could you tell us a little bit about the types of books that you do in your company? Um, mainly the books are um, Christian based. And I'm going to tell you when I started the publishing company, because God told me last year, and it was August the 22nd, I'll just never forget <laughs> that you can move, <laughs> you can move now you can announce your publishing company. And I was like, really? So I'm still nervous, but I still made the announcement, you know, put it out there on Facebook. And the first two people <laughs> was my pastor and my co-pastor. And I was like, God, you're really funny. And then the third person was a bishop friend of mine. And I said, he is really funny. And then the fourth person was a young lady who's becoming a minister. And I said, wow. So when it's your time and God tells you that it's time for you to go, you know, you can't delay. Mm -hmm. And so immediately when I put it out, my pastor called me, I'm going to say two, three days later. Mm -hmm. And things were in the, um, you know, in the making. And, um, so I, I mainly focus on Christian books, definitely nonfiction. And, um, you know, I've had people ask me about other books, but that's not where God has led me. And one thing I've learned in life is I'm going to go in the direction that God is telling me. Yeah. I'm not going to go because there's money. I'm not going right. to go because there's, um, you know, uh, big titles, you know, and big names. That's not why I'm in it. I'm in it because I want to make sure, you know, that your story is told, but that is told decent and in order and that people will get something out of it. They will be encouraged, motivated, uplifted. Um, the first book is called Spiritual Mindset by my pastor. It's changing the way that you think, that you stop thinking like the world thinks. The second book, my um, co-pastor wrote Exposing Shame exposing the things that have held you in bondage. It's like revealing time. The third book is called um, Pressing Forward. Move forward, press through some things. Like right now we're pressing through this pandemic. Yeah. We're moving past some things that are going mm -hmm. on in our lives. And then the last book is Breakthrough. 
break through some of the things that have held you down, you know, move forward mm -hmm. and see what it is that God has specifically for you. And then um, I am publishing for the first time. My um, first anthology is actually a second anthology, but it's the first anthology through my publishing company called Empowered to Win, the second edition. Wow. And that's for, you know, I'm looking for um, 15 women to, um, you know, let us know the trials and tribulations that you have gone through, but you survived, you made a difference and you're um, moving forward in life so that someone else could be able to say, I am that person. I am that woman. I've been through what you've been through, but I didn't think I could come out of it. Mm -hmm. So every book is going to be a book that's going to make a difference. And so I want to make sure that, you know, your story is told, but I'm not going to do anything that doesn't line up with uh, what God has told me to do. Right. Okay. So on that note, um, <laughs> having heard the, the basis and the principles behind your own uh, publishing company, Yes. When you got the opportunity to do Finally Free, that was a match for you. So how does your story fit into Finally Free? What I'm really asking you for is a little tidbit of your chapter. <laughs> so um, my chapter is called Birthing Your Assignment. Fearful, fearless, faithful, and on fire for the Lord. So those were like my subtitles. And what I mean by birth in my assignment is that I was going to do everything that God had assigned for me to do from that point on. And when I do it, I'm going to be fearless. I'm going to be faithful and I'm going to be on fire for the Lord. So whatever it is from that point on, the day that I said yes to birth in my assignment in the book, Finally Free, is the day that I decided I'm taking back everything that was taken from me that the enemy thought he took from me but mm -hmm. i'm taking back everything and i'm going to move forward because um as a minister and and people probably don't ever really like to talk about that i talked about you know dealing with um low self-esteem dealing with um self-confidence not having enough confidence because you can have confidence but you may not have enough confidence to walk through um, getting ready to speak on a um, podium or getting ready to talk to a group of women or, you know, men. I've been in places um, where, you know, some of the pastors didn't want women to speak or didn't want women to get up and speak. So I'm making it my business that I'm going to birth my assignment and whatever stage or whatever platform that God gives me, I'm going to be fearless, faithful, and on fire for the Lord. So that's kind of like a little snippet into um, what I'll be talking about and dealing with um, low self-esteem because the minute we start, you know, putting our trust in God, mm -hmm. that se low self-esteem, it actually dwindles because then your confidence is not built up in you anymore. It's built up in the Lord and what he's going to do for you in your life. Mm -hmm. I have to agree with you. Yeah. I definitely have to agree. Once I took it off my plate, mm -hmm. it was on. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You know, because it, it just makes a whole difference. And until you actually walk through that air, that that piece of it, you you just don't know what you're missing. Yes. Just mm -hmm. don't know what you're missing. And you know, I mean, I've seen the miracles. Yes. Literally. You know, the, you know, I don't know where this is going to happen. I don't know how, where I'm going to get this from. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden it shows up. I didn't even do nothing. It just <laughs> showed up. <laughs> yeah. I just love it. I love it. And can't nobody at this point make me uh, sway yes. from God because I haven't seen too much that has happened in my own life mm -hmm. i know god is real yeah so as a minister tell us a little bit about that part of your life 
Wow. You know, um, I'm going to say that I believe I've been walking in it for a long time. And I say that because, you know, we all say we grew up in church. Well, I definitely grew up in church. But as I grew up in church, not noticing that, you know, our pastor, our overseer was going to have me become the, um, the secretary. Then I was the church clerk. Then I just started, um, you know, teaching Sunday school. So I was already doing a lot of the things that um, I'm doing now. And I didn't really ever really notice that that's what I was called to do. I just knew that that was something that I was gifted in doing. But it was one day I was, um, I don't know if I was daydreaming or sitting somewhere and I saw myself in an all black robe with a Bible in my hand, walking up a hill and people were listening to me as I'm ministering. And that picture has never ever left me. And so I said, God, I guess one day in life, you're going to reveal that to me. So again, how can people get in contact with you? So I, I definitely always say Facebook because, you know, people are into this DM. Um, so Allison G. Daniels or either um, www.allisongdaniels.com. And that's my website. And It'll take you through everything, the publishing part, the speaking part. And let's say you want to be on my podcast. You can also be on my podcast. And then I also do something that um, I need to make sure I try to advertise that every Monday morning, I do a um, Facebook live every Monday morning at five o'clock. So it's called <laughs> Welcome to my Facebook Live at Five. And so I just wake you up early in the morning with some motivational words. So, <laughs> okay. okay, that's the best time to get it in, though. Yes. Because you don't yes. want the world to start yes. off wrong. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Start the day with something worthwhile to say. Absolutely. Yes. yes. Well, Allison, you have been a, a fun, fun person to interview, <laughs> the same yeah. police, and we are looking forward to having you back again with mm -hmm. your next book, with your anthology coming up, yeah. and also yeah. being able to support the women in your anthology. Yes. yes. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you both for having me. I'm excited. I'm excited, <laughs> too. Thank you. We are, too. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're so, so welcome. Thank you.